Can I have your attention, please, before we start? I have to tell you a quick little thing. Uh -huh. The Swedish Navy. Why does it, the, all the Swedish Navy ships have a barcode on it? That's so uh, when they pull into port, they can scan the Navy. Anyway, everybody knows Larry. Larry's doing this out of the kindness of his heart. It's the only way to do it, yeah. Try to give us some more. I'm sorry I can't paint. I have to stand over here and walk the sun. Okay, everybody. I'm glad it's all friendly faces, I think. Doug and I were a couple of months back were discussing. <laughs> <laughs> We're discussing, uh, we always used to have demos, and we had a great demo at the end of last year with Phil Graff. Yeah. And um, some of the interest in the club's been waning, so I, yeah. you know, we thought it might be a good idea to get the uh, demos going again. So uh, I foolishly volunteered to be the first, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm among friends. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. My intent wasn't so much to demonstrate painting, but I will. I don't know how far I'll get. Uh, but I want to discuss, because we have the plein air event, my approach and my equipment. As you can see, I have two shot boxes. This is an open box M, 1114, and that's a six by eight open box M uh, palm box. And depending on how far I am, from my car, depends on which one I'm going to take. <laughs> but if I can park next to where I'm going to paint, you know, I'll use this one. Of course, anything can go on that. But this is my baby. This is. Uh, That's called an open box? Open box M is the manufacturer. Oh, okay. And I brought some cards. If you're interested, if I leave anything out, if you have any questions you want to ask me, email me, call me. Oh, it's not a good thing. I have more of it. First, I guess everybody's familiar with the crumb cheese. I have one. I wasn't going to bring it in. I think I've brought enough. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but, you know, it's been around since the uh, 19th century. It's, I, I have one at home. It, mine's hardly used, but I'm never going to let it go. Uh, I have one with wheels on it. <laughs> oh, that's that's one thing I wanted to show. Is called a crunchy crunch? Is yeah. Well. Oh yeah. I, again, discussing equipment. This I consider one of my essential pieces. This uh, this will accommodate a French easel in the bag. And most of the time, I like to stand paint, but occasionally, it's more dictated by the subject. Okay. Uh, I like to sit or wow. late in the day. But this thing is. Uh, I mean, it's great. Uh, this is five by seven. You know, it really is. A, I do a plein air event every June for the last ten years of the Mystic Seaport, and um, you know you're you're walking all over the place, the parking lots across the street. So uh, it involves a lot of walking, so this thing really comes in handy. Where did you get that? Oh, you know, they make them, like if you looked at uh, uh, Gorilla. What is it? This, email me, and I'll... I'll okay. Oh, good. It has a constant C on my phone. It says something, but it's not a retro. 
Preston Wells. Preston Wells. Preston Wells. Preston Wells. Okay. Preston That's probably all you need to do is Google that. What's the name? Preston Wells. Preston Wells. Preston Wells. I, I had one made for artists. I forget what the what the name of it was. But uh, it had a canvas seat and it broke. This is great. So canvas seat, you know. And uh, it really comes in handy, especially if you're in a location where you can do, a, you know, where you're going to be doing a lot of walking and it's paved. I don't take it to Maine because you know it's not very good on rocks. I took it to the beach last summer when we were doing, but you know, it doesn't look at sand. So. <laughs> but, but then you need a beach card. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or you bring the little box. <laughs> I, I painted on the beach last, I guess it the end of last August. Um, and, you know, I had, I had this gear and I had the cart. And, you know, it was fine getting from the parking lot. To, I was down directly below the lighthouse. So it was for most of the most of the trip. I was uh, okay. I was on the cart path, but then getting down to the beach. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it was a fun experience, painting the ocean. You know, from life. You don't mind if we photograph I just don't want to see them. That's a real Atlantic ocean. I don't think I have enough of these for everybody, but if anybody's interested, this is, uh, I used to teach. Uh, some of my past victims are in this class. <laughs> or in this room right now. Can you email that as we Alma. I was just student. Alma, my, my first class. Yeah. Oh. We could take a picture. You know what? We could take photos of yeah. Yeah, we can. can you email that if uh, you don't have enough copies? Oh, sure. Yeah. I didn't think everyone would want one. Who oh, no. oh, oh, you knew? Know. Oh, you know. But uh, I'd like, like to explain my material list, yeah. but it's nice to have it printed out so I remember. But it's easel, a French easel for shot box, a portable easel for paint box. This is a shot box. Uh, they've been very popular, I would say, the last 20 years. I've had this one for 13 years now. That one, several years more, so it's probably, it's probably approaching 20, but, uh, yeah. the only, this, this one's had, I have another one, an 8x10, which was the first one I bought, and I found, um, I like that, this one, the portability of it. The 8x10 is great. I use it on my bike a lot. Um, but this allows me to go up to a 20 inch diameter painting. What's the biggest, what, what's the biggest canvas you can get on that little guy? 6x8. Six by eight. Six by eight. <coughs> I mean, you can get an 8x10 vertical. Vertical, okay. Yeah, it'll take, it, it's an 8 inch width. Oh, okay. You know, there you go. That's yeah, as far as it goes. All right. How do you clip it on then? It holds just hold this. This one's spring loaded. They're, well, actually, they're both spring loaded. I never use it. It does. It's great. It does. It's great. 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 It's Oh, this is a clip. Yeah, that's it. That's how you do it on the big one. How do you do it on the big one? I don't know. I didn't bring everything in, so I'm not sure where everything is. Why are you, do you rig it up with the um, paper towels or did it come with the green uh, foam? This is accessorized. Short of, they, they, have, they make one thing that I don't have, which is a wine cup holder. But that's <laughs> counterproductive. So I, 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 I
And that really does have that. <laughs> okay, as far as what do I use? This, it took me years to find this backpack, but this backpack carries everything. My brushes. Okay, if you're a plein air painter, you're going to be working outdoors. Over here, I've got my thinners and my painting medium. Over here, another scent, two essentials. Yeah. Yeah. lotion. Right. <laughs> Do you have a board? They're always in there, so that's right. Where's the ported body? Mm -hmm. Sketch pad. <laughs> Where's the seat? You gonna answer that question, Larry? Which one? Where's the ported body? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, it's surprising how much endurance you have on location when you get, yeah. you know, when I'm home, you know, I'm down in the bathroom once an hour at least. <laughs> right? I, I can go almost an hour and a half. <laughs> and then you find a tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lucky. There are certain advantages to be able to money. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> I feel so cheap. Okay, mm -hmm. what else do I have on my list? Yeah. My, my palette, of course, my paint. I've been using gambling for several years. I used to use uh, other brands. It's not that I wouldn't try something else, but you know, I find you get comfortable using it. You know the texture of the paint, and uh, the gambling's <clears throat> been pretty good to me. Do you still use liquid? I still use but liquid, but I also it? use another. But how do you keep it from drying out once you open it? Mm -hmm. It's stuck. Uh, uh, yeah. Just pour you, a little even, on your... If you don't use, get buy a smaller jar, yeah. you know, yeah. so that you use it faster. It's probably less economical, but... Um, this, place, this one's been in here a couple of years, and it's still... It's, really? it's still soft. The last couple of years, a couple of years ago at uh, the Sal McGundy Club, I won, surprisingly, a gambling <coughs> material yeah. prize. Yeah. And um, I started using this. It's solvent-free gel. And I really love it. It, um, it doesn't dry. I might use liquid at the beginning. The liquid will accelerate the drying of the paint. Uh, so if I want to do a quick underpainting, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll put it in with Lake Wind and my uh, paint thinners. This is Gamsol. It's a Gamblin odorless thinner. It's in a Grumbacker can. What's the name of that? I use Gamsol. Gamsol. G A M S O L. Hmm? It's not the same as turpinoid. Uh, no. 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 So what's the turpinoid? I, I never got used to the smell. This is uh, odorless thinners. I used to work in turpentine years ago in the home, and uh, when, my, when my wife was still working, she'd come into the house and go, <laughs> <laughs> "How can you stand it in there?" I said, "Breathing." What's wrong? <laughs> so, so I started. I started uh, just using the odorless everywhere. At first in the studio, but then I started taking it outdoors. I mean, I love the smell of turpentine, you know. Yeah. 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 People are age, artists are age, you know, you grew up with the smell of turpentine. But, um, okay, here's a couple of things. Gel. Painting panels. I always get questions, and they're usually always from Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> about uh, the panels I use. There's two manufacturers that uh, I use a lot. One of them is Raymar. I'll pass these around. And the other is Sourcetech. Raymar is like a composition board that it's based on. Ah. They're good. When I first started using these, I used to have problems with the linen delaminating. Uh, so I switched to um, 
source tech, and I've been primarily using that. This I have. This is a one inch board, and uh, I've worked on stretch canvas outdoors. But if you're, again, if you're going to be an outdoor painter, portability and uh, convenience are consideration. These are easy to store, easy to carry. My the top of my box will store a uh, out to us a 14 inch uh, panel. Right now, I think I've just got one in here, but um, I'll pass this around. <coughs> I have another list, and I'm going to make sure Elaine gets one. <laughs> you know, at the PGA uh, Championship, our orientation, I was the only person there that asked questions. Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but what roads close, are closed down and things like No one else yeah. asked any questions. These were important questions. As you probably all know, I uh, I go on a couple of painting trips a year, um, painting in Mystic um, next month, and I go up to Maine. I haven't been to France yet. Let's <laughs> go. But when you're traveling, no. This is great to have. This is manufactured by Ray Raymar, the same one that makes. Uh, the one pound. And <coughs> can I have one of those, one of those ports, man? The carrier weapons? Yeah. Oh, this, if you notice, it's slotted. Yes. If you want to look at this, I'll pass this around. Yeah, and you put your wet canvas. You just stack them in there, you know, and uh, this will hold up to seven pounds. So it's, it's really convenient. What is that called? What panel area? Where did you get that? Raymore. Raymore. <laughs> Larry, that only holds uh, panels, right? It doesn't hold regular rub. Uh, yeah, only one only hold panels. Panels. Yeah. It'll hold. Can uh, I send that panel back? I know the, they sell the one for regular canvases too. Can I have that panel back? There's a phone number <laughs> on the back. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. The one. slots are a quarter inch wide, so it'll hold two one eighth inch. Panels back to back or it's one quarter inch panel. Right? So, that, in addition to the fact that the box, the box will hold uh, like four panels, and if you have smaller panels, you can make them up. You care like six by eights and eight by tens. No, 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 open box down. Yeah. My gear is uh, all open box out. Okay. I do. I do have a uh, just a few of these. Forgive me for giving one to Elaine without the rest of you. <laughs> but, we take pictures. You know, for anybody that's interested, this has. The manufacturers of all the um, well, the ones I'm most familiar with. There, if you Google Prashad boxes, you'll come up with lots of manufacturers. Larry. Okay, but uh, Judson sells. Doesn't Judson, Judson sell does. a lot? Judson, yeah, Judson. Sure. In fact, I have Judson list, listed here. So, you know, if you want to, there's. Not there's only a few of these. If you want to like pack it up, yeah, but email me. Um, you know, if anybody have, has any questions after tonight, email me and I'll. Uh, Everything is going to happen. Yeah, I can
This is another great thing. You know, if you're just going out for the afternoon and you just want to bring a couple of panels. Just a little bit. This is a wet painting. Right. I have to get it home without getting it on my clothes. And, right. and, and usually I have my uh, apron off by then. Uh, so what it is, there's a space in between. Uh, well, down. And it just you can put nice. two wet paintings in there. And that's it. Yeah. Only if you have a place. Well, I you know I recommend if you're going to paint outdoors, panels on the way to go. You can paint on canvas, and and, and many people do. Uh, one of the problems problem that Greg is having with sunlight. If you set up into the sun, you're going to have to back that up. So the sun will shine through your canvas. Yeah, this you don't have to worry about. But, again, my presentation tonight was well, kind of spontaneous. Uh, been uh, the last week and a half. My mother fell on Mother's Day, oh, and she was on the floor for hours. Oh. And she's she has dementia. Oh. And it's been getting progressively worse. She managed to crawl to the phone, oh, wow. but she doesn't remember how to dial anymore. Oh. She didn't have an alert. She does now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did she dial? Oh, did I she found out that she's leaving. She knows how to dial. So she thought she was going to be She doesn't know. What happened, fortunately, because she I actually I call her twice a day. I call her uh, earlier, early in the day and at 7.30 in the evening. Uh, to remind her to take a medication. That was my alarm going off before. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, fortunately, because it was Mother's Day, my brother persisted in trying, you know, he called her like eight times. Because she made it to the phone, even though she couldn't dial out, she had the phone in her hand, she still had to answer it. But uh, she's got a good yeah. Mm -hmm. So the last week has been. Right. You know, I, I put in a camera. I ordered the uh, medical alert button. Uh, yesterday I spent all day. I, uh, we had a nurse, the doctor. I took the doctor last month. She didn't. I called nine one one. She didn't have to be taken away. You know, she had sufficiently recovered by the time they got there. But uh, she's feeling lousy. Uh, it's been very exhausting. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's mentally stressful. Yeah, it gets to you. Yeah. Okay, somebody asked how, um, how, it was me. how it holds the panel. <laughs> this slide, and one side is spring loaded. So you can adjust this if you want. Hold the twenty inch panel. I'm not shy about anything. That's not the Wow. Oh, it turns down. Okay. Do you have an umbrella? <laughs> <laughs> I told you this is about equipment. <laughs> This is manufactured by Artwork Essentials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a good umbrella. Oh, I got that. I'm not holding it. I am superstitious. Okay, on a windy day, don't Yeah, on a windy day, what happens, so? The whole thing goes over. A couple of years ago, I was painting with Sue at uh, something better. And I was set up by the bridge. And Sue was, and I know better. 
And I disabled that. That was a little process. Cool. And I left. I left to see what the other guys were doing. No. Oh, by snow. And then <laughs> I was by the, you know, the bridge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was by the railing. And it went all the time. Oh, oh, right. well, you can put a bungee on there in the middle. And I you can also put the umbrella down. Yeah. <laughs> no, right, right, right. And it holds it. Oh, that's a good idea. I tried. I got a bungee so hard. But then you can hang one of those waist hikes. But it's a great umbrella. Which one is this? Well, you're really cute. Now, this looks nice. I got it because I do it. Yeah. But it's not for the artist. This is for the painting. Dedicate yeah. this oh, oh. You want to get uniform light <coughs> on the painting. Larry, do you find it difficult? Uh, like when I come home, my paintings are usually darker than they should be. Yes. Do you paint in the sun? No, I'm under I'm under whatever. Under an umbrella? And I still yeah. I think all the light around me does that to my eyes. Yeah, that's oh, yes. Yeah. That's always if you paint a direct sun. When you bring the yeah. painting something, you find they're usually a lot darker. Yeah, a lot darker. Yeah. Yeah. You put them on and not under a, a strong light, and they look great. Should I open it? Yes. Yeah, okay. Anybody yeah. see yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. It's not bad luck. Oh, it's a, a sun umbrella. Okay. Oh. And, <laughs> and this, this is very important. Yeah. Yeah. It'll take, that way yeah. it'll take the easel too, and not just the umbrella. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 This thing is designed so that it'll, it in, in a puff of wind, yeah. it'll pop out yeah. and blow away. And if you buy the water, so I anchored that to my cart. I don't put it on my easel anymore. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So actually, they have a a, a big one called the Shade Buddy. Okay. It goes in the ground, doesn't it? Yeah, it goes yeah. in the ground. I was yeah, thinking you'd take one of those this year. Um, okay, I'm daring the gods. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is to have uniform light on both the panel and the panel. Because you, you know, oftentimes you could be mixing in bright sun on here, and this in shadow, and it really scro it screws with your yeah. color mixing. Yeah, it throws it all off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got away with it, I think. So, what is the string for? Oh, so what it does? When, when it when it when takes off. This just floats in here. If you get a puff of wind, it's designed yeah. to blow it yeah. out of the tube. Oh, rather than and the bungee is to keep it from going far oh, yeah. away. Yeah. 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 And obviously, it works because yeah. I still have it. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So, it's a good idea. as you can see, if you really get serious about painting, a lot of us, a lot of us are. It's an expense, you know. But uh, you don't need anything all at once. You just accumulate this stuff over the years. <clears throat> I've got an umbrella, Bed Bath and Beyond, that just has yeah. a. A little screw thing on it. Yeah, but what's good about it? screw on the back of my chair. This has a reflective oh, silverized yeah. coating on the outside and it's black on the inside. Yeah. If you get just a regular umbrella and especially just yeah. color, yeah. you know, it's going to affect your color mixing. Yeah, it does. You know, oh. yes. uh, I had just one that was white, so that, you know, that, that's just yeah, one. But mm. colored umbrella? No. Yeah, I was going to say that. Same thing goes with clothing. Color, you know, right? if, you're, if you're wearing a really bright white like, John's red shirt, paint in sunlight. If your painting's facing into the sun, that's going to bounce off your shirt and onto the painting. It really does impact your color mixing. Okay. What next? If you notice my both my palettes, they're yeah, the original wood. They were like this, but um, over the course of year of years, yeah, they uh, they develop a nice patina. It's a nice middle value, and I like it like that. And it's nice and slick. At the end of a painting session, you know, I don't try to clean it. My other 
box that I have, the 8x10, I've got a um, plexiglass surface on it, but I really love the wood patina. Mm -hmm. but when Don't you, try to clean it at the end. I rub it in. You know, I clean it, but I, you know, I don't leave, leave paints. But this is from accumulated rubbing oh. medium and paint. Clean it with, with what? Turn the top? Just grease it a little. Yeah, I just, uh, sometimes with medium, with uh, liquid. Okay, what, what haven't we discussed? Painting medium. This is like when I've been using it for years. I even overcoat a lot of my paintings after they after they dry with uh, diluted liquid. Helps give you a uniform. What's the name of the painting medium? Uh, liquid. Oh, a liquid. liquid. Okay. And do you thin it out? Hmm? Do you use uh, the thinner to thin it out? I use the oilless, yeah. Right. <coughs> What's I don't always work on a toned canvas, but you can see the advantage. It's my painting, white surface, my palette, yeah. a nice middle value uh, earth toning. So, that sounds Times. I'm using burnt sienna. I anticipated the question. <laughs> burnt sienna. And a little bit of ultramarine blue, just to gray it and darken it a little. I don't always do this. Sometimes um, I'll selectively tone a portion of the canvas, depending on the subject matter. But um, if I did this when I first got here, look at this poster. <laughs> this um, would have set up, but it will set up really fast with the liquid. It's not really that wet of surface. <laughs> Rather than uh, contributing to oh, the plastic, plastic waste, I have a reusable bag that I've been using for about 20 years. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, it's ahead of the time. And it looks it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go home and just dump it. Okay, so you can see the value of toning the canvas. It more closely matches the, uh, the tone of the palette. The advantage of a tone canvas is that value-wise, it allows you to work both ways. If I'm working on a white panel, I can only work down in value. That's the highest value I can get, the white, white of the canvas. But working on a tone canvas, I can work up in value, I can work down in value. So this is my, my middle tone. It's like working on, uh, anybody work on gray charcoal paper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I love, uh, I used to do a lot of figure work. Uh, working on gray charcoal paper with uh, charcoal and white charcoal. It's just. Okay. I guess it's time. <coughs> I brought a box full of paintings here. I brought that many because they were nested in the box nice and tight. Things wrapped around. You don't have to look at them all. I'm just going to do something, uh, just a simple organic. I'm just going to work from one of my previous paintings. It's not much, 
but just to give you the idea of how I work. Hey, you're not allowed to change your seat. <laughs> okay, brushes. My dirty brushes from the last time I went painting. You use human hair, don't you? Excuse me? You use human hair. I know. So he pulls it out of his arm and puts it on a stick. <laughs> I work primarily with hog bristle, and this is a synthetic sable. Okay, this um, over the years, as you paint, you develop a preference. Um, and I, I work with a lot of flats. Next step. Snap the soap, oh, wow. the old fashioned uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. soap. Yeah. And that, yeah, yeah, the yellow soap. Of course, you're going to get to all four of them. And you didn't know what to do. You can buy it. Again, you know, when you're traveling, so you got to have this. You know, everything's in here. My traveling bag. Yeah, everything's in here. 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 Yeah, you can also use this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Fresh cleaner. Everybody's seen this. But the bell snaps are so cheap. And I've got like a lifetime supply. I went shopping with my mother and I said I was looking for the soap. She bought like three or four bars. You know, and that one bar will last you a year or more. Especially if you don't okay. clean your brushes. <laughs> <laughs> That's just easy to get. <laughs> so, do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Right. Viewfinder. Essential, I feel. It's like if you're looking through a camera viewfinder, uh, especially a camera with a zoom. Here's my zoom. And um, it has a grid on it. Everybody familiar with the rule of thirds? I'm going to ask John to explain it because he's the photographer. Rule of thirds. Well, you've got four ground, middle ground. Aesthetically. This is divided into nine thirds. Nine boxes. And, you know, if I were an illustrator and I'm doing a picture of John's camera. I'm going to plop it in the middle, but, but aesthetically, in a, as a painter or a photographer, you're trying to make a more interesting composition. And one of the uh, rule of thumbs, roughly, is uh, the rule of thirds. Place my horizon on the bottom third. Place my subject matter on a vertical third. It. Um, see if I took. I don't know if I followed my rules all the time. Probably. Pretty much. Yeah. I have a tree. But <clears throat> this is pretty much um, works with a 3x4 format. So if you're working with this happens to be a 9x12 canvas. 
So uh, it's kind of locked into that format. My little box, 6x8, again, a 3x4 format. 9x12, 12x16, 18x24. It works great, but sometimes you, you want to work on an, an odd format. And I have a tendency to use this more often. And all it is, is a mat board. So I'm working on an 8x16. I know they have the, the little plastic viewfinders. I don't find those that can be, that it's a little too small for my eyes. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you, you just select the format, you know, adjust it to match your canvas. You can even take, like, if I have a, a 9x12 canvas as I do on the uh, easel right now, but I want to do a 6x12, I carry around a roll of tape and I'll just uh, take it off. So, you know, the beauty, and another thing about the panels, you take a knife and carefully. Mm. Okay. Mm. Oh, all my <laughs> carefully, you can cut it, you can cut these. Wow. Yeah. So, um, okay. With the birch, you can still cut it. Oh yeah. More so uh, with the one eighth. Oh, oh one eighth. Yeah. Okay. If you had the quarter inch. No, you can't. Yeah, quarter inch. You know, you'd have to have it cut. On, you cut it on a saw, which I've done. I've also had uh, a carpenter friend cut it off. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> yeah. Then I give him a It's just two samples. This is the uh, eighth inch, and that's the quarter inch. You can see how much bigger that is. And when, when you go to a larger format, you need to it because that board will warp. so much, but he never touched my painting. Mm -hmm. I can't stand it when these yeah. teachers take yeah. over your painting yeah. and they go to a crazy. Yeah. He's yeah. wonderful. That's my Thank lion. You. Remember that? So, we had, you know, when I say uh, affordable easel, we had a girl come in. <laughs> Remember when? Yeah. She came in with a studio easel. <laughs> was bigger than she was. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. When I'm working in the field, depend. Oh, by the way, yeah. 
<coughs> oh, I forgot to bring the other one, I think. When I'm working in the field, if I'm working on something complex, architecture, uh, then it's going to require a little bit more drawing. But normally if I'm doing something, what I consider organic, like a beach scene, you know, just a landscape, you know, all this, I basically do my drawing with a brush. Um, but something like that oh, was oh, was oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that required a lot of drawing. Oh, yeah. oh, that is so good. Oh, yeah. oh. 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 Where is this? Northport? That's Northport. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there is. So, you know, like this, the difference between a painting like this and a painting like this, this I'll just go right in with a brush. This I might spend a little bit of time with a pencil. Okay, only, you know, for the uh, yacht club. Hmm? Yeah, I guess so. You may not get a bag. <laughs> yeah. Okay, which one do you want? This is all your fault. Which one am I keeping? Dark gray line. They didn't even afford it. Did you see this? Yeah, sealed right into the canvas. Hey, Larry. Larry. Are these like, final, like a final painting? Yeah. Can you use these I to, to, work, to do the final painting? Or can that be the final painting? You're right. If, if you start a painting like that, and you finish it, and like that, you frame it, and sell it, and show it. Yeah. But if you want to make that bigger, yeah. just because someone else has that painting. Well, I, I have. Uh, I have. I have. This is Belfort. This is Belfort. This is Belfort. This is Belfort. This is a shipwreck. Greg had a question. Uh, oh, basically, you're ever asking if I use them as reference for a larger page. Yeah, all the time. We didn't see them yet. Send it that way. Backed up among those. Uh, the one with the cat boat. I did like uh, 18 by 26. This way or this way? <laughs> <laughs> One more piece of equipment. Oh, this one. 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 Oh, Oh, this one. Oh, Oh, this one. 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 Oh, Magic Yes. 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 It's to set the horizon. Give me a script. You know if I need a straight line? Yeah. If it's going. Oh. Training eggs. Nah. Jeanette's been subject to this. this Intended as a, my studio process, but uh, I, I have some repeat people here, so they <laughs> bear with me. That's so. okay, we have a good time. That's <laughs> okay. right. This is basically the process. This is the studio process. It's basically my, my outdoor process. Tone canvas, line drawing. I may not, out in the field, I'm not, I may not take the monochromatic underpainting. Monochromatic one color, this far. Because I'm going to, I want it to set up quickly, so I'll use a lighter version, a less intense version of my monochromatic underpainting. But it's giving me a roadmap where I'm going to have my dark values. Mm -hmm. 
not going to necessarily match my darkest values, but it's going to give me the location and relative values. Mm. <laughs> Larry? Yes? Oh, how many colors do you usually take? Oh, with see, that, that's the next step. <laughs> I went completely past that. That's because I was, I was going to mention it. I used to work with a lot of colors. But um, you'll get this box. The one limitation is the number of tubes of paint that you can carry. And uh, I use my. <coughs> when, these, when these get exhausted, mm -hmm. you know, when they're about halfway consumed, I'll just take them, <coughs> roll them, roll them up. Put them inside, and then for my, but still there's a limitation to the number of tubes I, I can carry. So basically I'm working with a chromatic palette. I'm using primaries and usually one earth color. Uh, but I'm going to tilt this down a little bit. Any of you read uh, Plain Air Magazine? This is something that they sell, they advertise, it's an yeah. 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 rush, rush, rush holder, yeah, oh. just a clip-on brush holder. Mm -hmm. Here's my brush holder. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my palette. It's chromatic, red, yellow, blue. One earth tone in white, and it's also arranged by value, um, with the exception of the burnt sienna. Let me see. This is a cooler and warmer version of red, a cooler and warmer version of yellow, a cooler and warmer version of blue. So, I, if I really wanted to limit it, I would. I could just go with you know, the three primaries. But this gives me a lot of versatility. What I discovered is working with the limited palette, it really didn't feel limited. You know, it, it, if you grow comfortable mixing, if you wanted to work with a limited palette, what I would recommend is, you know, when, at the end of the day when, you, when you're painting, you see something, try to match the color, you know. So that's, it's that everybody didn't get it. Is that alizarin? Yeah, that's alizarin, alizarin crimson, cadmium red light, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow light, or sometimes cadmium lemon yellow, <coughs> cobalt blue, and ultramarine blue. If you, if you notice, this, you know, warmer colors of the spectrum, reds and yellows, Cooler blues and greens, but yeah. and like the ultramarine blue actually has a little reddish tint to it, so it mm -hmm. tends to be slightly warmer than the cobalt. You didn't put any greens up there. Mm -hmm. make no greens, no. especially no. if you're going outdoors. No outdoors. secondaries. Why? I mean, if you're going outdoors anyway. No secondaries. You don't do it. You just mix it. Yeah. 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 I'm not saying I'm, you know, yeah. hard and fast. You know, with this, with the big kit, I can carry more. Mm -hmm. Carry viridian. I just yeah. take the viridian. Mm -hmm. And a yellow ochre. Mm -hmm. And I've got cadmium orange. Yeah, those two. <coughs> but, um, and I always like, if I wanted to use cadmium orange on a painting, and I use a lot of orange, whether mixed or tubed. Because I use it to modify my blues, mm -hmm. you can see it just you can just pop it right in there. So this is all chromatic. And is your earth tone burnt uh, burnt sienna? I'm sorry. Your earth tone is. This uh, happens to be burnt sienna, but I uh, use burnt umber a lot. Sometimes raw umber.
when I'm setting up in the field, I can adjust the height of the pallet, uh, of the uh, pallet holder. So if I, my subject matter is there, I, I, adjust, I adjust it to where it's at eye level. Sometimes because of the sun, the location of the sun, you might have to work at awful angles, but normally if I, uh, I try to set it up at eye level with the subject. What color is that? Let's see. Yeah. And a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm just reading. First. With oil paint, really, the drawing comes afterwards. Mm -hmm. So this, it's not uh, like a coloring book. You don't just you superimpose paint over it. So you do your drawing as you, as you go. Mm -hmm. Again, this is not going to be much of a pain, but I will. I'll take it. So. <laughs> 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 One thing, when I was first learning oil paint um, and you painting a sky, what color is the sky? Oh, a clear sky. So you put a blob of blue on there and then you realize you know, you have to lighten it. You start adding white to it, right? And you realize that the true value of that sky is closer to white than it is to blue, especially in ultramarine blue, very dark blue. So basically start with white and add color to it. It wasn't a lot of paint to learn that. <laughs> What blue are you using? Ultramarine blue. Oh. And how do you use the cold blue? I'm curious. If I were doing a, a big skyscape, and uh, I'd use the ultra, uh, I'd use both blues. I'd be using more cobalt near the zenith of the sky. Where it's a little, bit, a little cooler, usually, and this is all observation. Not, it's not a hard and fast rule. But the closer you get to the horizon, normally the warmer the blue is. That's again. Somebody just said yellow ochre. You know, I always usually like to use that during the horizon. <laughs> yeah. But you know, if you're working with a limited palette, you know what you have to you have to be able to mix a yellow ochre. And I'm not going to do it. 
Yeah. 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 No cerulean blue. I didn't miss the session. You don't realize that that was a jack. I've demonstrated for a Sue's group in uh, Woodbury a couple of times in the last few years, and I said, boy, if I can demonstrate for, for those those people, <laughs> <laughs> I can demonstrate in front of my friends. Very easy, very easy. Very easy. I'm not yeah. a friend. You're more forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> you accept me for what I am. So. That's right. <laughs> Who taught you how to paint? Excuse me? Who taught you how to paint? I've taken workshops, but I, I you know, what was it? Uh, Robert Henry said, you know, all art is self-taught. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you can get somebody to get you started. Yeah. And uh, hopefully you can learn, you know, I make mistakes. I learn from my mistakes. And then I try to share that with my students. It doesn't always work, for example. <laughs> Somebody's getting picked on. I am. You can ask questions while I'm painting because I don't know what I'm doing here anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not hitting medium yet. So you were I have I have uh, liquid on the palette. I'm using liquid. You're adding more orange to it as you go down or red? I uh, actually uh, yeah, I warmed it up actually with a little bit of red. In the studio. Uh, I do work on a studio canvas. I do more mixing with a with a palette knife, particularly yeah. this type. You know, I, Bob Ross, thank you. Bill Alexander. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The mighty. You know, th this is the traditional. Pa I hate. This. <laughs> no, it's just, uh, even the way you set up paint, because I'm, I'm left-handed, I was taking lessons in the 70s from, um, see you moment, uh, a great artist up in, um, there, so talk at, Christian um, White, Bob Barron, Bob Barron, thank you, yeah, uh, I, I had lessons with him, too, yeah, what a terrific mm -hmm. artist, yep. and, um, no, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> but you know what? You take lessons with with an artist, and they they teach you. Um, they sh they give you a diagram of their palette. You know, so you faith you want to be a good student. You faithfully copy their diagram, lay out the paints they want to. But Bob, Bob Barron was right-handed. It took me years to realize the reason I was. Dragging my knuckles through the paint because I'm left handed. So instead of having the paint go down the left side, I have my paint coming down the right side. I come in this way. Larry, how many brushes you Excuse me? How many brushes do you have to do? Sometimes, uh, as an exercise, I'll try to do it. If you've got a really good black, I'll try to do something like this, organic, with one brush. And I don't clean it that often. So what I'll do, I, I'll pull it. I always have a paper towel in my, my right hand, and I, you know, I'll pull the paint out. And I'm just, what? This way I'm not carrying thinners to my paint mix. I'm learning a lot. I saw them. Oh. I never had a painting class, Bill. Mm -hmm. I 
didn't know what she was doing. No. She was, I just said, maybe I had a lot of workshops. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I just had, I did. I didn't know. Well, just think about it. When you paint on location, you know, you can go out with a camera, take a picture, and, and run back to the car. But I just remember this night at Smith Point. You know what I remember? The mosquitoes. <laughs> they were just chomping away. Has, have you ever gone there and walked on the uh, National seashore, seashore side? Say that. Yes. I'm a scrubber. Huh? Yeah. I'm not a scrubber. I'm a, I'm a scrubber. Yeah. 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 At least that first layer. When you're painting outdoors, you're painting wet into wet. So when you're scrubbing, once you're advanced into the painting, what you're doing is you're, you're removing paint rather than adding. So, also when you loading your, your palette one thing you'll find some things you're going to be using more of than others I mean, you always know, probably put out too much of the red. It doesn't get involved in that many of my mixtures. It's more to modify the colors. Sometimes, like that North Port painting, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I went back the next day. Yeah, that was all done on location. Right. That was the North Port used to have a plain air vent. Right. And um, I spent two days on that little painting. Yeah, wow. Well, it, it shows it. And it looks it. I used to One thing when you're painting, Larry, did you want to take a break? Yeah. No, I mean, I can keep going for a 
wow. Okay, because we have uh, ice tea. I think you when you have some. When you turn your back, I'll this pull out the finished painting. Okay. Thank you. 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 They're a little pricey. If you were to duplicate that setup, it would be several hundred dollars. But Artwork Essential makes a real, uh, several easels, and they're reasonably priced. And it's like that tripod when I bought it was uh, two hundred seventy-nine dollars. Uh, if you notice these tripods, were different about them as opposed to a, a camera tripod. They don't have the spider brace. Those legs will spread out. So for stability, if you're working in windy conditions, it's a blessing. But this is an artwork essential. Is this 10 by 12 or 11 by 14 over there? I think it's the 11 by 14. Oh, okay. This is a really nice setup. Yeah. It doesn't. Um, you can store like two panels in the back that slots, but it's adjustable. Hmm. Oh, that's oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah. It's, it's a really nice setup. Yeah. So clean. <laughs> so far, it must be new. Might throw her out of the class. A few times. <laughs> and who, what, what company is it? Artwork Essential. I don't know if you have that sheet that I passed on, but thank you, Jeanette. You're welcome. You didn't show them the side piece. <laughs> it's on the table. In there, wow. Nice. Oh, that piece. Larry, right Larry, it's on the table. Give me it. You show them that. I have to paint. Okay, you paint. <laughs> You show them the side. Yeah, that's the side. Now, Michelle, I guess. <laughs> Later. What is the side? Going to throw paint on this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll hold this. We'll hold this. We'll hold this. It's all ready to be. Yeah. Doesn't it inspire you to come? It does. I did. I was showing this to Sue before. Hey. I have a bicycle gear. I have a rack for the back of my bike. Oh. And I'm supposed to be exercising. And um, <laughs> I have painting gear that fits on the back. So this is one I did wow. up in Maine a few years ago. Very nice. That's my And, and a little bit of white, of course. White. And, white. and then a little bit of green sienna touch down. Oh, right. Is that a little yellow? The, the water. Oh, the yellow water. water. Oh, this is green. Oh, this is green. Oh, boy, that's good. Then you get it relatively straight. Uh, Very nice. Well, oftentimes, when, you, when you're painting, yeah. you know, it's, it's good to get colors next to each other. This by itself might have looked a little too dark. But when you see it against, yeah. you know, I'm anticipating that I'm, I'm going to, that I'm fairly close, but you can judge the value once you get the adjacent color in. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 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 
It's an autumn, an autumn beach. You can tell I really don't want to dirty another brush. <laughs> Decisions become less intellectual, you know, more. Gel. Magic. 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 Magic.
Let's make a little This might be a little bit lighter than I wanted, but this has more solvent in it. And I should be able to just You know, again, it's you got to get away from this. I'm going lighter than I normally would, but you can you can see that's a pretty. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, fine. Good, uh, really fine lines, and of course, I'm going into the detail after this is set up a little bit. Right. You know, normally I'd be on location probably to do that, which was because of the mosquitoes. <laughs> uh, it was probably under two hours. I had to get out of there. I hate mosquitoes. I'm not going to get too far with this. But it's the same thing. This is another. I don't use this that often, but when you're working with a wet painting, you have those. Yeah, you can use it to remove paint. Oh, that's what it's going to erase. Oh, we're going to put this in the brush. Well, it's not an eraser, but it's a rubber. We use it for printmaking. Yeah. I'll have them. Like a squeegee. Yeah, like a This is pretty primitive, but I hope you're getting the idea. What's your favorite time of the day for painting? Being light changes. <laughs> I'm not a morning person. So, <laughs> anymore. So, <laughs> I wish I were. You know, the, the difference. The only time I think I'm really up early enough to, to see how beautiful it is in the morning is when I'm heading out, out to the ferry, you know, yeah. and the difference between morning low light and evening low light is the moisture that's in the air, and the moisture just makes such a difference in... Mm -hmm. <coughs> but in answer to your question, uh, Elma, it's a combination of uh, thinning the paint, not too much of it, but, and um, no light stroke. It really, um, if you see the way I'm holding the brush now, you know, you could just knock that out of my hand, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So stroke. Uh -huh. <clears throat> You're all familiar with my studio pieces, and you know that I'm. <laughs> With this, I'm, I'm using a broad brush to suggest it more than uh, suggest a graph, more than paint uh, individual blades. It's almost like a dry brush technique. I don't like the summer greens that much. Thank <laughs> you. 
transition so we should really be using a clean brush I'm just going to soften the transition here Thank you, Larry. That's excellent. I, mean, I, could, I could play with it for a while. Larry, do you garnish it then? Yeah, especially the small ones. I use uh, mostly retouch. Just you. Oh, retouch. Yeah. Absolutely. How long do you have to wait, though? You have to wait like that. Because I don't work heavy. Yeah. 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 It usually sets up pretty fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you use the spray retouch or you brush it on? Spray retouch. Yeah. I use that, yeah. 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 Ye